Hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining the deep dive on the Snap Pixel. I'm Tyler Rich from the Ad Product Quality team at Snap. Hi, everyone, and I'm Seema Putiaparel from the Solutions Engineering team here at Snap. Today, we will review the key components of the Pixel and how the Pixel drives measurement, engagement, and ROI for clients on Snapchat. Well, the Snap Pixel is a piece of JavaScript code that helps you measure the cross-device impact of campaigns. The Pixel allows you to track key events, create audiences of Snapchat users who visit your website, and helps to drive engagement. With the Pixel, advertisers will be able to see how many Snapchat users take action on their websites after seeing their ad, and they get a better understanding of ROI. The Snap Pixel is best suited for your direct response goals, such as driving leads, subscriptions, or product sales. You can measure these goals beyond what happens during a single session or across multiple devices. For example, let's say you are a clothing brand and want to retarget users who have visited your website. The Pixel will allow you to create a custom audience of those users and retarget them. This would allow you to maximize your results with Snapchat. The Snap Pixel also helps you target and op optimize, but we'll go into that later. Now, let's review how attribution works with Snap Pixel. The Pixel works by reporting a Snapchat user's actions on your website. Actions are reported as an event, for example, when a user visits a page, adds an item to their shopping cart, or is making a purchase. The event is reported by the Pixel to Ads Manager and reported as a conversion metric. Let's say, for example, a user is shown your ad in Snapchat and then visits your website on a different device. The Pixel will report that user's actions and help to measure the true effectiveness of your ads on Snapchat. The Snap Pixel JavaScript code can be found by navigating to the Snap Pixel tab in Ads Manager and selecting Create My Snap Pixel. Once your Pixel script is generated for your ad, you can install the script on your website and start utilizing the benefits of the Pixel. Now Seema will review how to install the script. Take it away, Seema. Thanks, Tyler. Once you have created your Snap Pixel, you can select the Setup Pixel, and the Pixel script will be displayed in a pop-up window, as you can see on the screen. You can copy the script by hovering the mouse cursor over the script and selecting Copy to Clipboard. This will copy the entire Snap Pixel code, which you will then need to paste into your website's code and customize it for your needs. To install the Snap Pixel, the Pixel script you copied should be added directly to the HTML source code on your site. To do this, find the head tags near the top of the HTML's, uh, website's HTML code. The head tags contain all the scripts that you would use on your website, like tags from other platforms too. If you're using a content management system or a web platform, try, to use, try looking for the header template or the header includes file, which will contain these head tags. If your website is powered by Shopify, or if you're using tag managers like Insighton or Google Tag Manager, we have supported integrations and installation guides for these platforms. To find these installation guides, please check our Business Help Center at businesshelp.snapchat.com and search for the Snap Pixel. If you check the chat window of the webinar right now, we will copy in direct links to these articles. While we currently do not have fully supported integrations with other tag management systems that are not mentioned here, the pixel should work correctly if embedded inside any tag manager. Now that you have your pixel code copied and ready to go, let's see how you can configure the script and customize it for your website. First, let's start by understanding the anatomy of the pixel script. The pixel script has four main parts that you can see highlighted here on the screen. The first part you see here is the core body of the JavaScript. The most important thing to note is that you do not need to edit or customize this portion of the script. Part two shows the pixel initialization call. It contains the pixel ID. The pixel ID is a unique identifier for your pixel and it is linked to your ad account ID. When you copy the pixel code from Ads Manager after hitting create my pixel like we just did, the code will already contain the correct pixel ID unique to your ad account. In this case, the pixel ID is a string starting with 1A6F. Part three shows the field used to pass the user parameter. In this example, the user email field is being used. You can choose to pass in user phone number as well. 
This is why installing the Snap Pixel is different from others because it needs to be configured to pass the email of the site visitor back to Ad Manager. This email would then be used to link the site visitor to a Snapchat user. And then this information is used for conversion attribution, optimization, and audience creation. Part four is the field used to select the event type that will be reported to Ads Manager. In this example, you can see the page view event is being reported. You can trigger different types of event on different pages and on different actions, like upon the click of a button. And we'll review this. Also. Considering the user parameter to pass back email or phone number of the site visitor is the most important piece in correctly setting up your Snap Pixel. To get the full benefits of the Pixel, we recommend that you pass emails or phone numbers of your site visitors so we can match them back to a Snapchatter's email or phone number. The Snapchat SDK hashes all personally identifiable information using the SHA-256 algorithm, so customer data is always secure. Passing back user email or phone number will allow you to attribute more conversions to your Snapchat campaigns and enable more robust Pixel custom audiences. So how do you use the user parameter? The user parameter is a variable on your website. What is a variable? A variable is an element in your code that stores values that change depending on condition. All sites will have a variable like custom email that will store the email of the user that is logged in. So for example, the variable customer underscore email will have the value seema at email.com when I log into the website and tyler at email.com when Tyler visits the site from his browser. Every website is coded differently, so there's no standard way to find this variable which stores the user's email. You might need to consult your web developer to configure this. You can also choose to pass in user phone number or user email depending on what you have available. Both are valid ways of passing back identifiers to Ad Manager. In this example, you can see that on Shopify, the user email is stored in a variable called checkout.email, as you can see on the right. So the user parameter user underscore email in the snap pixel code is set to checkout.email variable. Moving on to event types, you can fire different event types on different pages or on different actions like the click of a button. For example, you can fire the sign up event on the registration page of your website when the user finishes signing up successfully, then view content when the user visits the product details page of a product add to cart when they click on the add to cart button on the product page, and then finally the purchase event on the purchase confirmation page when the user successfully finishes payment and buys the product. Event parameters are additional values you pass to Ads Manager while firing a pixel event. Highlighted in the table are the parameters price, currency, and transaction ID. These three parameters are actually required parameters for the purchase event to be able to report on the value of conversions or the ROAS metric. You will set these parameters to the price of the product being purchased, the currency being used, and the unique transaction ID or the order ID associated with the purchase. In the example that you can see in the table on the right, you can see that the currency is set to USD, the price is set to 333.33, which is a fractional value, and the transaction ID contains the order ID of my purchase. You can choose to pass in many other parameters with other event types. They are all listed in detail in the Business Help Center article. To review a purchase event example, on the Shopify platform, you can see that the currency is stored in a variable called shop.currency, price is stored in a variable called checkout.totalPrice, and the transaction ID is stored in checkout.orderID. So firing the purchase event with all the required parameters will look like the example pictured on the slide. And like I said, you can also track multiple events on a single page. For example, if you want to track page views and purchases on the same page, you would configure the script like the example on the left where the pixel is initialized once and then both the events that you need to fire are fired individually after that. Once you have installed the pixel and configured, to, configured it to fire different events with all the different parameters, you might want to check if your pixel is set up correctly. We have built a Google Chrome extension called Snap Pixel Helper to help you check this. To use the Snap Pixel Helper, go to the Google Chrome Web Store and look for Snap Pixel Helper. 
Install it on your browser. Once the extension is successfully installed, you will be able to see a small Snapchat ghost icon on your browser. After configuring the SnapPixel on your website, visit your website on the browser and click on the SnapPixel helper icon to confirm if the pixel is firing correctly. The SnapPixel helper will show you if your events are being fired correctly or if there are some errors that you need to fix. Now, Ty now Tyler will dive deeper into all the features of the SnapPixel that you can use once you have finished installing it correctly. Thanks, Seema. Once the pixel has been placed on your site, you can check if the pixel is working correctly by viewing the pixel dashboard in Ads Manager. The dashboard can be viewed by selecting the Snap Pixel button in the upper left of the navigation bar. If you have implemented the pixel correctly, the pixel dashboard will report on event parameter types that are active on your website. Please note that the data reported on this graph is simply the raw pixel event data, not attributed events from Snapchat users, such as purchases, that were driven by ads. The totals reported here are also from all traffic sources. To put it simply, how many times the pixel has fired in the last seven days. This tool helps to verify if the pixel is working correctly. Reporting for individual event type can be broken out by clicking on the All Events drop-down button in the top right-hand corner of the screen, and then selecting an event. For example, if you wanted to verify if purchase events are being reported from your site, you can check this by clicking on the event drop-down menu. If that event type is not present in the list, you may need to review your Pixel implementation to verify if the Pixel is working correctly. Once the Pixel has been configured, you will need to enable your ad sets to track the Pixel in the ad set settings. This must be done in order to track conversions in Ads Manager. Steps to enable the Pixel. One, enter an ad set settings by clicking on the edit button in the ad set view in Ads Manager, and then two, toggle the snap pixel button to attached. Once a user attributed conversion occurs, which is a pixel event tied to a Snapchat user who was shown your ad, that attributed event will be reported in your account in Ads Manager. To view this reporting, please select the column edit button in the Ads Manager reporting table and select the pixel conversion metrics you would like to view. Now let's review how the Snap Pixel can help optimize campaign performance. The pixel can be configured to report purchase event data, such as the total price of each purchase. The data is then used to report return on ad spend, known as ROAS. This is calculated as the total sum of purchases divided by ad spend. The purchase value is reported from your website via the price parameter in the pixel script. A dynamic JavaScript variable is used to report the price data for each purchase pixel event. You must provide currency, price, and transaction ID data for ROAS to work correctly. Let's say, for example, a campaign generated $10,000 in revenue from purchases and the campaign spent $500. The ROAS for that campaign would be calculated as purchase value, $10,000, by the advertising spend of $500, which gives you a ROAS of $20. The total is representative of how much revenue is generated by each dollar spent on advertising with Snapchat. Here's an example of the pixel script configured to report currency, price, and transaction IDs for a purchase event. This data is required to report ROAS. Once the currency, price, and transaction ID parameters are reporting data to Ads Manager, you can review the ROAS metric in Ads Manager. Here is an example of how you would find that metric in the reporting table. On the right of the screen is a screenshot showing how the ROAS metric reported in Ads Manager. Now let's review how the Pixel can help you retarget users with custom audiences. Pixel custom audiences represent a group of high intent individuals who have engaged directly with your brand in the past. These segments are automatically developed based on the specific actions people are taking on your website within the last 30 days, such as visiting a product page, adding an item to their cart, or purchasing a product. In order for a Pixel custom audience to be generated, a minimum of 1,000 Snapchat users would need to be matched to a Pixel event, such as page view, add to cart, or purchases. Once 1,000 Snapchat users are matched, a Pixel custom audience will be automatically generated. 
Once created, your pixel audiences can be found under the Audience tab in Ads Manager. Now let's review how the pixel can help optimize campaign performance. Review pixel goal-based bidding. Once the pixel is active on your site and reports a minimum of 100 purchases or sign-up conversions, you can bid and optimize towards sign-up and purchase pixel events. When bidding on pixel conversions, your campaigns will optimize towards users most likely to visit your website and complete a sign-up or purchase event. Although every advertiser will see the pixel bid options for signups and purchases in Ads Manager, not all will be able to use them immediately. You must be hitting a minimum of 100 attributed sign-up or purchase conversions per week to access this feature. Once the minimum requirements are met, you can select website conversions as the campaign objective for any new campaign, and then select pixel signup or pixel purchase as the ad set goal. And with that, Thanks again for joining the deep dive on the SNAP Pixel.